Welcome to uh, Ballroom Dance Chat. My name is Mariusz Skonieczny, and today I have a special guest, uh, Chris Kasperowicz, uh, who is the owner of a Casper Dance Studio in Chicago, and he's also the organizer of the Windy City Open. Uh, welcome, Chris. Hello. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much for t uh, taking your time and uh, uh, doing this interview with me. And the reason why I wanted to, uh, to to chat with you is because uh, you recently had your um, your competition in Chicago. Uh, but what strikes me about you is that um, in the past you used to organize uh, ballroom dance competitions in Europe, uh, more specifically uh, in Poland, uh, because that's where you're from. And about uh, I would say seven or eight years ago, you decided to go into organizing competitions uh, here in the United States and I thought I would have a chat with you because the competitions between the uh, Europe and and US are quite different wouldn't you say so yes I'll agree with you absolutely yeah the, our competition this year was our eighth competition and you're right uh, this is a little bit different between the competitions I used to uh, organize competition in Poland the, where I came from, and also the European Championships, big competition, and I have to say that they are a little bit different. It, you know, the, the main the main thing in competitions are always the same. Uh, you have to have a venue, you have to have um, music, you have to have uh, dancers. The, the whole thing is basically the same. But here in the United States, it's a little bit different because we have only in the United States the, uh, the Pro-Am event. And this is what is very challenging for uh, organizers because, you know, normally in Europe you have amateurs or professionals or 10 dance competition. Here, one teacher is coming with five, seven, sometimes 10 students and the competitions are much, much, much longer. And because of the different level of competition here in the United States, you can you can compete in bronze and silver and, and junior and uh, different ages. It means competition is very, very long. And because of it, the whole organization is, is much more complicated. So in, in, in Europe, because they're different, uh, they're not as long, so they're more like one-day events? You know, you have, of course, the biggest competitions like uh, German Open or Blackpool when you start competition on Friday, but this is only basically amateurs or amateur couple or professional couple. And can the length of the competition, the biggest competition in the world, is only because you have... 360 amateur couples or professionals and you have to do many rounds first round elimination rounds and so forth and so forth here it's maybe because of the pro-am competition one teacher and one student is like one normally European one couple and if he's coming with five six ten students it means like the same guy represents ten couples Hmm, I see. Uh, you know, another thing about uh, the, the, comp the differences between these competitions is 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 the venue. Uh, here, yeah, the, the venue is also different. Yeah. Uh, see, the, basically in Europe, most more, more, maybe not every competition, but most of the competition are uh, organized in big venues like uh, sport halls. Uh, here in Chica in Chicago, and as well as almost every competition in uh, United States is done in hotels. Uh, why, why, is there, like the, why is it like this? Why is it like this? You know, mm -hmm. like, like uh, I, I would assume, and, and I'm not a, a competition organizer, so, but I would assume that having an event at, at a hotel is, is, is much more expensive than if we were to have it at, at, at like a basketball court. Am I right? No, because we are talking about, if we are talking about big events, that, uh, for example, this event which I did in Poland, uh, the venue was huge, was like 5,000 people in audience. 
Uh, this is why maybe it looks like it's more expensive here, but if you have 5,000 tickets sold, it means you know expenses are kind of covered. It's different here in hotels because of because of quality. The dancers they they don't need to take the whole costumes and go to changing room only. They have their room upstairs. It means they can go to the room and and rest straight in the place where is uh, competition. It means it's very very convenient. And here we Americans are very convenient. And I think this is this is why it's happening like this in United States. I see. But now, when when you first arrived in the United States, you ran. Um, well, first you you worked for someone as a, as a dance teacher, and then you ended up uh, uh, starting your own studio, Casper Dance Studio, and and years later you you ventured into uh, organizing a dance competition. Uh, what, what made you wanna wanna be an organizer again? And you know w- w- why did you do that? I was thinking about organizing competition in United States from moment from moment I came to Chicago I have to tell you it was straight basically maybe 4 months after I organized my last competition in Poland and Austin where I came from um, we had we had uh, experience uh, from Poland, we knew what we I knew what to do, but you know you are coming to a new country in Poland, uh, everybody knows me. I had my program on t v and I was ready to do competition, but language barrier and everything else it, here nobody know, knew who am i who I am, and uh, you have to work hard first, prove your quality. You have become one more time a judge because I was judging competition in Europe as well, international competition to prove yourself here. To organize or uh, organizing competition in the United States is not so easy. You have a, you have to have a license for for the competition, and to have a license you have to be approved by National Dance Council of America. It means this is not so easy, and this is why it took us so long, almost. 15 years, because our first competition should start in 2005. Really, we started in 2006. It means 16 years between my last competition in Poland and first competition in United States. But uh, really, I have to tell you, I had it in mind, me and my wife, because we are working together. We have studio together. We were talking about doing competition here big competition really big event for a long long time did you have to uh, because i i know that some organizers they buy a competition in a certain city and they then then so they buy a license and then they move it uh, is this how it you went very, around very similar it was very similar in my situation uh, because at this time when we want to do this competition and we were ready uh, uh, our national organization didn't have any opening. They have to give you license, and because they didn't, they didn't let anybody uh, do a new competition. We bought the license from another competition. Yes, that was the same story. Do you also have to have a license to do a competition in Europe? Uh, in Poland, in Poland, I have to tell you from my experience. In Poland, we have organization. Uh, the dance sport organization and basically we don't have the same restrictions because as long as you can you have money enough money to organize competition place venue and everything uh, you know competition should be no problem to organize and in this case this is not the case of united states you have to have a license for it and you have to be approved you have to have a name approved and everything else it means it's more and more difficult here I see. From the start, when you put you put the Windy City open, what struck me the most is how successful your competition was right from the start. And usually, it as any business, it takes time to build up clientele, get the visibility. Uh, how, how did you achieve such success right from the beginning? See, being an amateur dancer in Poland, as well as professional dancer, 
being a judge uh, and uh, organizer of many competitions in actually nine big competitions in my city in Poland and uh, like like I said before European championships we had we had experience from the organizing point of view we knew what to start from we maybe from outsiders we look like like new people mm-hmm. in this business but we had the whole uh, background uh, background uh, and uh, we always from the beginning we knew as a dancers and judges what dancers need and uh, i was sure i'm saying we because this is whole team of organizers that uh, what what they will expect from us and always we are going for quality and quality towards dancers quality for customers uh, because really this is what is most important quality and not quantity um, our competition from the start you can enter online um, you are part of this competition you you saw it that you can enter your entries online the um, judging system is also online you have information we try to always go not only what dancers will expect but extra mile further to make them uh, feel like they are needed uh, during the competition and this is why i think the competition is so successful mhm and one other thing that i find unique is that unlike other competitions and i've been to many all over the country you put a lot of emphasis on having a really good show uh, and nowadays what i'm seeing uh competitions are are going away from it i i don't know if it's because of the cost they they don't want to have the featured show but you on the other hand bring the best couples in the world to do a show uh, what's you know what's your philosophy behind this? Uh, like I said before, our philosophy for whole event, for whole competition, is quantity first, and qual- uh, quality first, and quantity second. Uh, having a chance to present uh, to dancer and the audience the best possible show we can, uh, we we hope that we'll give dancers and audience the best example. Uh, that ballroom dancing is not only sport, but it can be really art on very, very high level. And we hope that uh, this is a place when everybody can see live the best dancers. And I know from myself, because I started when I was 14, and when I, sh- when I saw the first time the world-class world champion dancing on the floor, it was my tick. This is what made me dance and I am in this business for already 40 years. Uh, we hope that will give people a little bit more than only competition, only results and trophy. Uh, I think that the big show is part of, of event and maybe dancers, they, like yourself, you are competing from competition to competition, but we have also great venue in Chicago, the Hyatt Regency, when we have 700 people coming on every event. And this event is not only for dancers, but also for the audience. And I think that uh, we own them something good, something the best, best we can. And I know this is money and the competitions are working as a corporation. It means main thing should be the profit, but uh, I believe that the profit will come and uh, the quality of event is more important than profit. I see. As as a dancer myself, you know, n- not just me, but as dancers, we want everything to work smoothly, and and we only notice when a, the organizers screw something up. It, you know, in other words, we don't really pay attention to what's going on behind the scenes. But you, as the organizer, and from your point of view, what are some of the challenges that you face? Uh, running uh, a big dance competition like that? This is a very, very good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, see, I believe that 90% of work as an organizer should be done before competition, and the rest of it uh, should be easy and smooth. 
but the the life is a little bit different, and um, we have to deal with the situation and what what you are asking for. For example, it, we have to have time. Every organizer, we have to have time to uh, reserve hotel and food for and trophies for dancers. And sometimes dancers they they don't realize about it. They don't. They simply come into competition and dance. They don't know that we have to have uh, that we have to build a program. Uh, with giving time to everybody to change clothes, to have a rest between rounds, special professionals, they have to have the 20 minutes time between rounds. <clears throat> and uh, dancers, they have no idea what we are dealing with. For example, the deadline. We have something which you see on every competition, deadline for entries. Uh, if everybody will have, will pay more attention to, to deadline, then that's we as organizers will have time to prepare everything smoothly. And sometimes when you are coming to competition, you see, oh, they, have, they are a little bit late with entries or they are a little bit early with entries. And uh, the answer, they don't like this when, when it's too early or too late. But the problem is because many, many times uh, we have uh, entries coming a few days before. And uh, if, if somebody doesn't have trophy, if some, it's not enough trophies of medals from organizer, I saw it on many competitions. Now, when I have my own competition here in this country, I understand why it happened. Because the organizer, they didn't have uh, time to, <laughs> to prepare for so many entries. If it's less entries, it's no problem. But it's too many entries, sometimes it's a problem. Also, <clears throat> a last time cancellation. This is the big problem for every uh, every com organizer, competition organizer. The last time cancellation, you order already hotel and food and everything and trophies, and and dancers are not coming. If they inform you about this, it's not a problem. But sometimes they simply are not coming. Uh, also, I think uh, some problem is with teachers not communicating thing with their students. Uh, I think the teachers should educate their students what the event is about, what is, how long or how early before competition you have to be on the floor. Because the small things, for example, we are we are waiting for a dancer. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, have a break between competition. But sometimes you're waiting because somebody didn't look in the heat list and they went somewhere to change clothes. And 20 well, minutes later, you know, everybody's waiting for it. Well, right. And then you have one person like that. You have to push the entire competition. Uh, right. And sometimes, you know, one competition, the morning session is, is ending uh, only half hour before evening session. And everybody is saying, wow, why organizer didn't prepare the correct program? And program was prepared, but, you know, sometimes sometime is behind us what to do. We want to do it in our competition. We have, you saw it probably, uh, the communication between dancers and us is a little bit better. We have electronic system. You can check on your phone what your hit is, hit list is. We, we are trying to inform everybody about their results. This is very important. I, I believe that dancers should be able to see it as the results as soon as, as uh, we can. Uh, as we can give them, uh, and this is their right. Uh, but from another point of view, if sometimes teachers will speak to their students what the competition is about, that will be much easier for everybody. Yeah. Wow. Very interesting uh, yeah. to, uh, to to hear from uh, your, your point of view. Uh, is uh, so the final the final question that I wanted to ask you is: Is there anything uh, that you would want to add? Uh, about your experience that you know I didn't think to ask you. Uh, you know, I I believe that uh, you ask me very interesting questions, and uh, I'm trying to do everything in Chicago to to give uh, to Chicago audience and to Chicago dancers the best chance to enjoy the good quality competition. And the same we are doing in our studio. It means if Anybody will want to 
have the good experience that I'm inviting you already for the next competition next year. Well, you always have me. You always had me every year. Uh, but for those who, uh, you know, uh, who would like to find out more information about you and your competition, uh, can you uh, give them a, a website, phone Absolutely. number? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the best number to contact, uh, the best uh, way to contact us is, of course, website. We have email address over there. You can contact, everybody can contact us. Our website address is www.thewindycityopen.com. And every information is there. I think, I think people will enjoy. If, you know, you have, to, you have to enjoy first time. You have to experience first time. But after first time, I think you'll be hooked for bowling dancing. And thank you for talking to me. Yeah, thank you very much for taking uh, some time from your busy schedule to do this interview. I really appreciate it. So uh, I hope you have uh, a good rest of the week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.